Welcome to more World of Warplanes content from the Noble Q, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the Tier 6 Premium German fighter, the Spitfire 5 DB605. Hello, and before I get going on the subject of this video, which is the aircraft you can see on the tarmac outside my hangar, I should explain it's very windy in the UK and the background noise is the wind blowing across my chimney tops. Nothing I can do about that apart from apologise. I hope you don't find it too distracting. And here we have a Spitfire 5B uh, with German markings. What? You may be saying, well, this actually happened. Um, this represents a captured Spitfire 5B uh, which the Germans fitted with a Daimler-Benz DB605 engine as well as making some other changes uh, for instance taking out the electrical system the 12 volt electrical system putting in their own 24 volt one also removing the armament and once this aircraft was trialed it was found to be superior allegedly to the Merling equipped Spitfires well it was lighter and it had no armament so that's not a, a comparison uh, which bears much weight um, we'll never know whether it was actually in combat trim uh, as competitive as the uh, Spitfires with Merlins. Uh, nevertheless, it did fly extensively in 1944, and here it is represented in the game. Uh, I have to say, I can't really get used to the shape of the cowling, which looks more like a Messerschmitt 110, perhaps? So, having had a quick look at it, we'll now look at the aircraft statistics. Uh, if you don't want to look at a spreadsheet, use the link below the video to skip ahead to another part of it. Here's the spreadsheet with 16 entries for Tier 6 uh, fighters. If we scroll along slowly here, you can see them appearing. But that actually represents 17 aircraft. And why is that? Well, there is a combined entry for the Spitfire 5B and Spitfire 5B IM. And those of you who are aware of the history of the game will know why that's a combined entry. Suffice to say that you can only get the Spitfire 5B these days. Uh, some of you older hands in the game may very well have a Spitfire 5B IM. I do. So. I'm going to spend a moment explaining how the spreadsheet works. Now, if you know that already, use the link below to skip ahead to the discussion of the statistics of the aircraft themselves. In column C and D, we have the Spitfire 5 DB605. Well, it's called a Spitfire 5, but it is a 5B to all intents and purposes. And then the aircraft off to the right, each of them occupies two columns of their own. So the Spitfire 5 is in E and F and so on and so on. And down the left, we can see the characteristics that are of viewable in the hangar UI. I've supplemented that with a little bit of extra information from a third party website here on the gun armament. For the purposes of the comparison, the configuration was stock, equipment was removed and the pilot sent back to the barracks. The modules are all top. Color coding, best in class is denoted by green color, uh, light blue color, second best in class, light purple, third best in class. And where there's a gold color behind the name of the aircraft, that indicates that it's a premium or a reward plane. If we scroll down, using red colours, you can see that I reversed the logic for worst in class figures. Right, so let's discuss the characteristics of the aircraft. Let's start with the business end of the aircraft, and that's the gun armament, and the rating overall is 16, uh, which is third best in class, but that's shared with several other aircraft, uh, the two other Spitfires for a start, the Russian Aero Cobra, the A6M50, and also the LA5. Uh, what you have to watch out for here is that the cumulative DPS is 280, which is pretty decent, but it, there's a wide gap in ranges that you have to consider. The two 20mm cannons have a very good uh, range, optimum range of 2,231, which is commensurate with the best in uh, this uh, comparison. However, the four 7.69mm Brownings only have a range of 1400 feet or thereabouts, so you have to be up close and personal to do your full 280 DPS. As far as the heaviest hitters in this comparison concerned, watch out for the Mustang 1A. That's got four 20mm cannons over here, which also fire at the same range as the Spitfires. They're the same guns. And also the Aero Cobra, the American one, with its bunch of mixed armament. It's most of it fairly short range, uh, but it kicks like a mule. If you come to survivability, most of these figures are compressed, so second best in class 6 is uh, nothing to cheer about particularly, but at least the fire resistance is at the top end of the scale for fighters. Airspeed, hmm. the Spitfires are not fast. Uh, they're barely any faster than the Zero, 
Um, and certainly then nowhere near as quick as the high energy fighters over here towards the end of the comparison. 48 rating there, 46 rating there. That's the BF109F, the I210. The standout here is the P51A, which is a vertical fighter to be, uh, um, I should point out, up and down, not round and round. The Mustang run like Mustangs, um, the British uh, um, variants of the P51 are also much faster. Bear that in mind, because I'll be talking about that when I come to discuss setup for this aircraft. Boost duration, fairly healthy, eight seconds. Useful against uh, some of the turn fighters, potentially the Aero Cobra, the Zero, and the KR61. And talking of maneuverability, mm, for a turn fighter, it has some serious competition at tier six. 83 is a pretty decent figure, but watch out for this roll rate, which is pretty poor. Um, and immediately you can see it's badly outclassed by this the zero. You don't want to get a, into a turn fight with that. You possibly don't even want to take your specialized Spitfire up against an unspecialized zero. And that would be particularly so if the special pilot for this plane, Akira Akani, is in the cockpit. Then the turn, turn rate of this aircraft is spectacular. And other competitors, the KO-61, perhaps somewhat surprisingly to some people, the Yak-1M will outturn a Spitfire as well, like for like. And the XP-55 Ascender is often built for turning and will be a serious threat to you. So the Spitfires have got their work cut, cut, cut out for them. After that, we start getting into the realms of aircraft approaching or fully into the high energy um, configuration, usually. There are some exceptions. For instance, the BF-109F can be built as a capable turn fighter. Uh, but as you can see, uh, sorry, I've gone up, back up into speed maneuverability. The maneuverability figures here drop off uh, fairly spectacularly. And usually these aircraft will be going up and down at speed rather than going round and round. And we've come to the altitude performance. And this is where this Spitfire scores. We have an altitude rating of 54 and best in class figures for maximum optimum altitude and also service ceiling. Very unlike the Merling equipped Spitfires, uh, we have a significant advantage vir by virtue of the installation of the uh, DB605 engine, which apparently was observed in real life. And it's been reflected in the game. And the only other aircraft with the same kind of performance is in fact the BF109F. You can even get up towards the P51As and above them in theory, although there's not much in it. And that might have you thinking, well, why not build the Spitfire um, VDB605 as a high energy fighter? Well, I'll discuss that in the setup. Let's just take a look at the worst in class figures and survivability. Well, as I mentioned, all of these figures are compressed. So often the best figures are also the worst or near the worst. Not uh, anything to really take note of there. I want you to take note of the lots of red appearing for the airspeed, though that's pertinent to what's coming up in the setup discussion. And maneuverability, that roll rate is worst in class. Um, if you're a maneuverable plane, even if you're a, a plane that's slightly less maneuverable than the Spitfire, you might be able to throw it off if you've got a fast roll rate. I draw your attention to the LA-5. And as for altitude performance, one thing to watch out for here is that although it's a good altitude performance, the Spitfire has a pretty poor climb rate. Where does that position this aircraft? Well, you'll see my setup reflects the fact that I've chosen to build it as a turn fighter and a turn fighter I think it is. And we'll discuss the reasons why I think it's a turn fighter uh, in the setup section. But that said, You've got competition uh, in terms of maneuverability, stiff competition, and you're going to have to fly with great care. And I would advise using an alternative scheme of attack, what I call slash and burn, where you try and come in at speed, perhaps in a dive at something like an A6M50 or a Yak-1M or an XP55 Ascender. And then whilst they're trying to figure out who was shooting at them, you speed off perhaps go and get another uh, shoot at another target or just get some distance between yourself and your target and then come back and repeat and rinse. So you need a blend of both uh, turn fighting skills and the knowledge when to use slash and burn. Okay, that's enough from the numbers. Let's go and see how I've set this aircraft up. 
Here we are back in the tarmac uh, with the Spitfire 5 uh, DB605 and the first thing to note is that this aircraft is specialised which means I have all of the equipment and consumable slots available. However, let's go and see what you'd be missing when you first acquired this aircraft and so I'll pop it into stock configuration. And there you can see of the four um, equipment slots, one on the airframe would be locked and of the five consumable slots, again, one on the airframe would be locked. Right, let's pop that back into specialist. Let's see how I've built this aircraft. And no surprises on the cockpit. Um, we have a gun sight to improve accuracy. And then we've gone for a maneuverability build, which means that we have the lightweight wing frame and the lightweight power unit. Now, the next choice um, is the po polished skin for me. Uh, however, that does impact maneuverability, even though it improves the speed of the aircraft, which I like. Um, if you want to avoid that entirely, your only choice is the reinforced skin at the cost of speed. What I've done instead is pick off the bonus characteristics that improve your man maneuverability, 1% down there in orange, and 1% maneuverability in turns. Um, hmm. I might also consider taking off acceleration while diving and changing that for 1% maximum speed with boost activated. Your alternative is to consider building this for speed because of the altitude performance and try and make use it as a high energy fighter. Um, what would your choices be then? Well, in specialist configuration, you wouldn't change these probably. You'd have prioritized the polished skin though, and then the lightweight uh, airframe probably. Um, if you're stock, of course, it would have to be the polished skin, but you'd lack one of these slots. As far as the engine is concerned, it's a choice of two, a combined injection boost system or an uprated engine. Um, two reasons why I'd go for the combined injection boost system. Um, well, three actually. The first one being is that you've got eight seconds of boost at base. You will lose some of that, but not enough to make a significant difference or certainly an unmanageable difference. Uh, also, as a mouse and keyboard player, if you are that, most of your acceleration will be done under boost. That's what you'll be using to speed the aircraft up rather than the throttle on a joystick uh, whilst not using the boost. And that makes this a better choice for me because I am a mouse and keyboard player. And the third reason is that the uprated engine inc uh, increases the vulnerability of this aircraft to fire. And I don't like that particularly. And if you choose an operated engine, um, you might do as a joystick player, then you have to think about what you're going to do to offset the increased likelihood of fire on this aircraft. And that brings us quite nicely to the discussion of consumables. Um, I'm just going to quickly look at pilot skills very quickly. I do not like using, for reasons I'll explain in a moment, points, skill points on these skills here. Firefighter, which extinguishes fire and fire resistance which will reduce the duration and extent of the damage from a fire. And therefore, because I don't use those skills, um, I'm out of fire extinguisher. Now, if you want, if you're one of those who really loathes having your pilot injured and being, being reduced to effectiveness for many seconds in a battle, then your choice is a first aid dressing kit, in which case that changes your viewpoints on other things, probably. If you choose to um, uh, employ a first aid dressing kit, then at least one of these two skills is probably going to be, be important to you, if not both. And that, of course, is an opportunity cost, because if you've got one or both of these skills, it's going to slow you down acquiring the other skills. And the other thing you will probably do is go to the gun site if you've got one mounted, and probably you have. Uh, let's just try and get that up get the alt key and you will want to pick off the bottom characteristic there which I haven't in this case um, offsetting um, the pilot's uh, vulnerability to uh, injury. After that consumables becomes quite straightforward it's pneumatic control assist for 10 seconds of extra maneuverability in a tight spot. If the control services are damaged you can repair them with the emergency control system engine cooling for 10 seconds of extra boost provided you've got at least one second available to you and universal ammunition. I don't fire gold and universal is much better than the standard ammunition. Now, this aircraft of course is a crew trainer and in the forthcoming battle, I have this pilot who is highly trained. If I was starting from scratch and building a pilot specifically for this aircraft, something I wouldn't do, but some of you do, then either under a speed or maneuverability build, I would go for the aerodynamics expert. If it's a maneuverability build, I'd then go aerobatics expert Marksman 1 and Engine Guru 1 probably. Under a speed build, you'd probably go Aerodynamics Expert, probably still Marksman 1 to improve the accuracy of the guns, 
and then engine guru one and then you continue to work on um, this area here possibly even going for engine guru two guru two first now there's a skill here that i particularly like which is resilience and i'm glad to have it uh, it's difficult to get because it's a three point skill but it repairs all critical damage heals all crew injuries reduces engine and weapon overheating by 50 percent increases maneuverability and engine thrust by five percent when you have lost 70 percent of your hit points well, if you're flying carefully and if you happen to have employed a speed build, possibly this wouldn't be such a useful skill, but in a dogfighting scenario, this is a really nice skill to have, but it's hard to get. So let's just settle the question, at least for me, of whether this is a turn fighter or a high energy fighter because of the altitude performance. For me, it's a turn fighter. I don't think the base characteristic speed is high enough to make this prob uh, a capable t um, high energy fighter. However, if you're very good at high energy fighting, maybe you'd like to test that out and see if you can make the Spitfire perform well in that role. Okay, I think that's enough on setup. Let's go and see how this aircraft performs in battle. This battle takes place on the peripheral mission map. It's the Snowy Shore variant uh, that has five sectors. They're laid out roughly in the shape of five spots of a die. And we have a central airbase. It's a repair airbase and therefore both tactically and strategically the most important sector on the map. Um, it has the special characteristics of allowing you to spawn there. Really useful in the center of the map. You can select a different tier six, uh, tier six aircraft in this particular case. Um, for me, uh, if you're destroyed, or you can get full repairs on the aircraft. And then on both axes, it's flanked by four garrisons, just conveying the standard three resources every five seconds. So to win this map, pretty much uh, try and hold the airbase longer than the enemy and at least two garrisons longer than the enemy. And if we look at the order of battle, and I'm top tier in my Spitfire DB605. I have a bomber, an A26B with me, and a heavy, a P38J. It's all looking good so far. We have a Yak-7, which can blap things from long distance. Could be fun. And another bomber. That looks good. On the enemy side, there's a BF109 Friedrich. Uh, and then we see two ground attackers, and the alarm bells started ringing at this point. Um, if those two are smart and split up, they can take all the garrisons, and possession of the airbase is not going to be enough. We're going to have to watch out to see how this battle develops. And then we have two turn fighters, a boomerang, and a specialized Spitfire 5. Now, normally, I'd be playing most of this game in the center, but the presence of those two ground attackers made me decide that it would be smart to get that central location first, but then go off and try and take garrisons, or at least uh, search and destroy missions and take out as many of the enemy aircraft as possible to stop them from flying around and taking garrisons. And we just have to keep a very close eye on how this battle develops. So it's not clear who's got the advantage here. Let's see how this battle played out. So, as I mentioned in the strategy and tactics section, my first port of call is the airbase in the centre. I'm just doing some uh, sightseeing at first, now I swing towards it, and I begin to gain altitude, and of course, as we've uh, noticed that this Spitfire has uh, considerably better altitude performance than the uh, other two Spitfires at tier 6. The heavies aren't anywhere near me, so I decide to use some of that altitude to dive in on the air defense air fi uh, light fighters. Here's my first victim. Now remember the weaponry um, has widely uh, varying ranges. It's 20 millimeter cannons, 2,231 feet, 1,444 feet for the machine guns. Do you need to manage these cannons? I'm guilty of overheating them uh, all too often. That was my second air defense aircraft. Quickly followed by my third. We've still only got just over 50% of this pytho. The enemy is making a fairly good play for this central location. F4F flies across me and becomes my first enemy aircraft. And then I find the, the Spitfire. And he's so intent on shooting the fighter in front of him. And I would make that same mistake probably because he's nearly got it down. That gives me the opportunity to shoot him down. And the airbase is ours. Now to clear out what's left if we can. 
we've already got a garrison, which is good news. That's the bow fighter down. Let's take out the Yak-9. The F-109F flies across me conveniently. I get some assistance destroying him. Let's just quickly look and see what's going on. Well, their Spitfire is uh, high scorer, and then it's followed by the uh, IL-2. And I immediately decide that I'm not going to hang around to the airbase. I'm going to try and work my way to the garrison um, that's off to my right at the moment. But it doesn't quite work out that way, as you'll see. Find the Spitfire again. Second time I've caught him at a disadvantage. Blows up. And now there's so much red around me that basically I just have to start fighting uh, in circles. This happens to be the boomerang. Nasty guns on that. Pretty manoeuvrable as well. Now considering he's unspecialized, I have to compliment this player. He's done a really good job of turning with me and he's made it pretty difficult eventually he succumbs. However, we're now three sectors to two down. I really would like to get to that garrison, but I can't. The reason being is I'm too near the enemy spawn. And given the time I took to kill the boomerang, that's allowed the enemy Spitfire to come in. Now he's fully focused on me. And somebody else takes him out for me, which is just as well. I would had shot out his engine, but he'd done the same to me, which would have made it an interesting battle. But now I can't get away from the spawn. The boomerang comes in. Fortunately, he's been heavily damaged by a teammate, so I finish him off. And at this point, I begin to stall. Put the nose down to try and gain some speed, get the engine back. Fortunately, the F4F didn't choose to contest me, so I'm able to chase it down. Now I'm trying to get into this garrison finally. I'm trying to decide what's the best target. Initially shoot at the heavy, realise it's flying away from me. There's a very low health uh, air defence aircraft in front of me down to the left and I finish that off and we have this garrison. Now this has allowed the Spitfire to come back in. It got my wing, I repaired it immediately, swung round. He then rams one of my teammates, and that makes it easy for me to kill him. And again, we're three sectors to two down. I'm badly damaged. I'd love to go for repairs. However, it's also a good thing to try and defend this sector for a while. I thought the boomerang was going to shoot me. I was wrong about that. It allows me to get behind him, and that's an easy kill. And it's been so busy for this period of battle, I simply haven't had a time to go and do anything tactically. I've just had to keep fighting and keep fighting. And now I'm in trouble. I've just flown in amongst three aircraft, one of which is the Spitfire. The resilience skill kicks in. I nearly got the Spitfire again, however, this time he manages to finish me off. So we spawn in the airfield, and during the time I've been down, the enemy has succumbed a little bit to my team, and we've actually got four sectors to one. So now I can think about clearing them out from the airfield. We don't want to lose this if we can avoid it. It's on a knife edge, and we have lost another sector, so if they get this, we will actually be down three sectors to two again. And we can see the scores are 423 to 375. We have the advantage. But that won't last for long if we lose this airfield and then struggle to retake it. Put down the F4F bot and then take down the boomerang again. The F109 flies conveniently across me and there we get the winged legend. And now the airfield is secure again. The hero of the sky goes through and it's turning into a pretty good battle. Bow fighter flies below me as bots often do in heavies. If you're a skilled pilot in a heavy, you might be able to pull the same trick, but I wouldn't recommend if you're a newer player doing that with your heavy. You're easy prey for multi-rolls and fighters. And if you do do it, only do it when you've got plenty of company. 
now searching for further targets. Yeah, 4F comes into view again. Don't want to go head on at him. He will head on at him. He will ram me. So I pull out and turn on him. He doesn't have anywhere near the maneuverability I have, so that's an easy kill as well. Thought about going for repairs. Realised the enemy aircraft were too near. Just try and choose one. And the way I dodged that tells me it must have been a yak, I suspect. It was. Didn't want to get hit in the face by the big cannon on that. Now I'm behind it. Apart from the fact I keep overheating my guns, it's an easy kill. And the ace notification goes through. Picking up repairs. Go searching for more work to do. Avoid the boomerang because of its uh, good guns. That allows my team to finish it off and then I get a nice ram from one of my teammates. Probably doesn't matter, I've still got three quarters of my health. Briefly think about going to take repairs and then decide that it would be a very good idea to start taking out the Grand Attackers so they can't affect the games anymore. Reduce the IL-2 considerably, then turn to address the fighter that was uh, coming in. That's trying to take uh, my teammate off the uh, Grand Attacker. Turns out to be the BF-109 and that uh, has allowed me to get behind it. And that is an easy kill as well. Now again, the enemy looked like they're going to go three sectors to two up, but by this time we've managed to get enough points so that that probably won't matter. So I choose to go back and pick up repairs because I can, rather than fly off to the garrison that's under threat, the enemy garrison that's under threat, and try and secure it. And at that point I have a focke wolf coming at me, and that inconveniently damages my engine. I get behind that using this maneuverability build. Put that down, but now I have to go for repairs again. And we are three sectors to two down, but we have managed to get ourselves so far ahead in points, it probably won't matter. Nevertheless, I do the right thing and begin to head towards the garrison which we're attacking. Should fall before I get there, and if it doesn't, then I'll make sure of it. At least that's the plan. It does fall, and that secures the victory. Uh, enemy aircraft approaches. The bow fighter comes in low again. I managed to shoot its engine. It's heavily damaged. But we just ran out of time before killing it. The game ends with a victory. Nice haul of medals and uh, just over 22,000 personal points. Not a bad game. So if we take a look at the outcome of this battle, we can see from the centre it's a 5 chevron battle or a grade 1 fighter, and that grows 201,373 credits or silver if you prefer. About 67,000 of that came from the premium account bonus. If we look into the message box, we can see that uh, expenses were 2,000. I lost the aircraft once. Uh, prepaid consumables were being used, so no expenses there. Experience of 7,150, uh, the base is 2,804, uh, premium account bonus as you can see there. I was also using boosters which accounts for the rest of the bonuses. It's a similar story on free experience, 287 at base, uh, a premium account bonus, and then the boosters kick in for a, more than a thousand of that. Uh, one token, that was for the first medal of the day, which was the ace. Uh, we also got the winged legend and the hero of the sky badge. If we look at the personal score tab, we can see that the three class specific missions were complete, hence the five chevrons. 22,285 personal points, two sectors captured, 22 aerial targets destroyed, two more than was required for the ace, 4,602 damage to aerial targets, and 30 critical hits. Quite good, that. Lost the aircraft once, as mentioned, and capture points of 680, which was divided into 400 for defending, 280 for attacking. And we look on the team score tab, we can see that was um, plenty enough to be first both by personal points and chevrons. Uh, decent effort by the P-38J, uh, and an interesting effort from the AX-7, especially as down tiered. No chevrons, but 12,185 points. Well, not sure where he was fighting, but where he was fighting, the enemy wasn't very happy to meet him, that was for sure. On the other side, one of the Grand Attackers, a pretty decent game as well. Um, the Spitfire, a tier 5. 
unlucky, bravely engaged me three times around that number. Came out worst each of the times, I think. Uh, would have had a better game had that not happened. A bit unlucky there. Uh, fairly decent effort from the uh, other uh, uh, grand attacker. And then down here, um, a couple of participation medals. Um, and that probably tipped the balance in our favour. Well, overall, pleased with the result. And that concludes my look at the Spitfire 5 DB605. I'd like to thank YouTube subscriber Asif Telper, and I hope I haven't mispronounced your name, for requesting that I do a video on this aircraft. I hope you've enjoyed it. And the Spitfire 5 DB605 is a capable turn fighter, although it has some stiff competition at Tier 6, the Zero, the Yak-1M, the XP55 Ascender come to mind. There is some prospect of building it as a high-energy fighter, not a route I would choose to go, but those of you who are very good at that mode of fighting might like to experiment with it. Whatever, if you get the right build and the right pilot skills, you should have many good games in this aircraft, and occasionally a great one. Well, I hope you found that helpful, and if you did, then you'll come and see my future content. But until then, this is the Noble Q signing out.